Hi, and welcome to our first video in geometric series, where we are going to talk about uh, what an, a geometric series is. And so with arithmetic series, we dealt with D, the common difference. For geometric, we're going to deal with R, the common ratio. We're going to do a couple of real world applications using our geometric sequence. And then in our next video, we're going to deal with summing or, be, or our geometric series. Don't forget some uh, vocabulary words that won't disappear, infinite versus finite, explicit versus recursive, and convergent versus divergent. <clears throat> so let's just jump right in. Ooh, excuse me. Let's just jump right into that geometric sequence. Uh, example 1a. Let's determine the common ratio between each term. So with the arithmetic sequences, to determine the common difference, we took the second term and subtracted the first term. Guess what we're going to do here? We're going to take the second term and divide. So we're going to take negative 2, and we're going to divide by the first term, positive 8. And we end up with negative 1 fourth. Well, let's see what happens when I take 1 half, the third term, and divide by negative 2, the second term. Now look at that. I still end up with negative 1 fourth. So guess what our common ratio is between all of our terms? If you guessed negative 1 fourth, you got it correct. Woo! So our common ratio is negative 1 fourth. Uh, the common ratio is the constant ratio between geometric sequence terms, and it can be positive or negative. You take the next term and divide by the previous term. Using our common ratio, let's predict the next three terms. So if we recall our common ratio is negative one-fourth, what do I do to one-half? Well, this time I'm not going to divide, I'm going to multiply. So a half times negative one-fourth is negative one-eighth. Negative one-eighth times negative one-fourth is positive one-thirty-second. One-thirty-second times negative one-fourth is negative one-twenty-eighth. So we ended up with what we call our geometric sequence. So before we dealt with arithmetic sequences, they had a common addition or subtraction between. With geometric sequences, we have a common multiplication or division. We're always going to multiply, but as you can see, if we're multiplying by fractions, technically we're dividing, right? So that's how that works. So just always be thinking like when you use, when you predict you're, you're using the multiplication, when you uh, solve for the common ratio, you're using the division. And even if you're left with fractions, that's okay. So we end up with this sequence, we're good to go. So let's actually practice it ourselves. Find the common ratio and predict the next three terms. Oh my gosh, Miss Jag, you gave us something crazy looking. Well, did you know that when you have ge uh, geometric sequences and arithmetic sequences, sometimes we need them to be in formula form to use them in our real world problems. So W plus three, two W plus six, four W plus 12, I can still find the common ratio. I'm gonna take the second term, and divide by the first term. Boom. So I realize that 2w plus 6 has a common factor of 2. And when I, when I factor out that 2, look what happens. I'm left with a w plus 3 on top and a w plus 3 on bottom in a method that I can divide away. Because remember, when you have just these pluses, if you're looking at my screen, looking at my cursor on the left-hand side, if you just have these pluses, I can't subtract because that's terms divided by terms. But here we have multiplication terms divided by a multiplication term. So I'm allowed to divide. So make sure you know what when you're allowed to cross things out in a fraction and when you're not. So I'm able to cross out that W plus 3, and I'm simply left with a ratio of 2. Well, why not test it out using our third term divided by our second term? Pulling out that common factor of a 4 up top and a common factor of a 2 down bottom, look what magically appears. We end up with those W plus 3s again. 4 divided by 2 is still 2. So I figured out my common ratio of 2. So all I have to do to 4W plus 12 is multiply by 2, get the fourth sequence term, and then keep on going. So I multiply my third term by 2 to get my fourth term, which is 8W plus 24. I'm going to multiply that times 2 to get my fifth term, which is 16w plus 48. Multiply that by two, which is 32w plus 96. And to da, I predicted the next three terms, a sub four, a sub five, and a sub six. Ta-da! So even when our uh, sequences look funky and they have variables, we can still apply the common ratio and predict the next three terms. Hmm, look at that. Pretty easy, right? So let's move on to understanding how would we create these formulas for ourselves if we didn't just have, uh, if we couldn't just use a sequence to predict.
We can create the equations given the right circumstances, just like we could with uh, arithmetic, explicit, and recursive. For the explicit, you need the first term, you need the common ratio, and then you just do n minus 1. For the recursive, you need the first term, you need the common ratio, and then you're going to do a sub n minus 1 like usual. You're just going to tack that on. So let's find the explicit and recursive formula for this sequence, which we got, which is uh, our sequence from the example 1a. So our r value is still negative 1 fourth. Our a sub 1 is still 8. And we're going to solve our explicit formula using this formula and our recursive filling this in. So first and foremost, let's fill in r as negative 1 fourth. A sub 1, the first term is 8. So let's fill that in for our explicit formula. We plug in 8 for the first term. We plug in negative 1 fourth for our r value. And then we simply type n minus 1 is our explicit formula. If I wanted to reduce my negative 1 fourth from a fraction to a decimal, I've also given that formula right there. Now let's move on to our recursive formula. We declare the first term, and then we plug in our ratio multiplied by a sub n minus 1. We just tack that on every single time. Ta-da! That's it. Those are our explicit recursive formulas. Yes, it is that easy. So what if I want to find the nth term of geometric sequence? I want to find the 27th term or the 48th term or the 5,372nd term. Well, I'm going to need to set up an explicit formula so I can plug in 27 or whatever number for n. So the first thing I do is find my common ratio. Then I declare my first term and I plug it into my explicit ratio or explicit formula. So my common ratio is 151.2 divided by 189. And then I can confirm it by doing 120.96 divided by the second term, 151.2. It's 0.8 both times. I did need a little bit of a calculator to solve this. But now I know my common ratio and I know my first term. So I'm ready to plug that in. 189 times the ratio 0.8 raised to the power n minus 1. Well, which n value am I looking for? The 27th. So I plug in 27. 27 minus 1 is 26. And remember your order of operations here. You cannot do 189 times 0.8 because PEMDAS tells me to deal with the exponent before the multiplication. Please, please, please don't have a calculator error here. So in my calculator, I do 0.8 raised to the 26th, and then I multiply by 189, and I got 0 0.5. Excuse me, sorry. 0 0.571217. So that would be my 27th term. <clears throat> to finish off, we're going to do a real world application of the sequence for geometric. So Damien purchased a late model car for $15,000. At the end of every year, the value of his car depreciates by 11%. So let's write an explicit formula for the value of Damien's car after n number of years. So to write that explicit formula, I need two things. The first term, $15,000 and the R value, which is 11%. And I need to know what N stands for. In this case, N stands for years, not months, not days, not weeks, but years. So to write the explicit formula after N number of years, I take A sub 1, uh, or because this is a real world problem where there's an initial purchase, it's actually A sub 0. Sorry, my apologies. A sub 0 would be the initial purchase, and every year henceforth would be our n equals 1, then n equals 2. So n is going to be yearly. In order for it to depreciate by 11%, let's take a moment to recall percentages. Because sometimes I know we struggle with this information. So if we increase a value, then technically you're doing, you're multiplying by 1 plus the percentage in decimal form. If you're decreasing a value, you're technically multiplying by one minus the percentage in decimal form. So what are we doing here? We're depreciating, so we're decreasing the value. So if I multiply by 0.11, you're not gonna get the right answer. If you multiply by 1.11, you're not going to get the right answer. You actually have to multiply by 1 minus 0.11. So your, your R value is actually 0.89. So again, if you need to do a couple of practice sessions with that, where you multiply 15,000 by 1.11, you multiply 15,000 by 0.11, and then you multiply 15,000 by 0.89 to figure out, hey, in that first year, if I depreciated by 11%, which of these numbers makes sense? You can surely do that for yourself. I do have to wrap up. I'm coming up on my 10 minutes. So here's my explicit formula. Uh, A sub 1 times, oops, 
there we go. Okay, a sub one times r times n minus one. But since the information has an initial value, aka I purchased it for fifteen thousand dollars, depreciation doesn't actually occur until uh, that first value. Look what happens when you plug in n equals one. You get an r r raised to the zeroth power, which just means uh, one, right? Anything raised to the zero power is one. So this should make sense that our a sub zero value is still 15,000. But if you plug in a sub one and a sub two and so on and so forth, if you notice what's happening to those values of the n minus one, well, you're actually just raising it to the n power. If we plug in that first year, we get one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So we end up with this formula, 15,000 times 0.89 raised to the n value. And we're going to plug that in for, oh, no, that's all they wanted us to do was create the equation. Now, what is the value of Damien's car at the end of the seventh year? You're going to plug in for n equals seven. And we use our own equation. And we end up with 6,634.7. 6, and we uh, go ahead and write that in terms of a sentence using the explicit formula for the depreciation of the value of Damien's car. All of that was basically in the given information. We get this formula, a sub n is equal to 15,000 times 0.89 raised to the m. And we can estimate that Damien's car will be worth 6,634.7 after the seventh year. That's all I've got for you guys, and I'll see you online.